Okay, in this video, we are going to uh, create a sunbeam, sunbeam effect uh, from the light coming in through the windows, uh, hitting the spheres and the countertop, and then uh, proceeding down to the floor. So if I take a quick render snapshot of this, uh, see where we're at. Okay, and uh, here it is. Uh, as you can see here, it's just only got one area light in the scene. If I bounce to perspective, uh, take a look at the scene real quick. Um, it's a very generic kitchen scene with a few spheres on the counter. And we've got an area light outside of the windows there. Uh, and that's currently the only light that's illuminating um, our scene. So uh, first off, to get this to a place where it's uh, more appropriate for a good looking render, let's go to the, our render options. And I've been rendering in Menta Ray and just make sure that you've got Menta Ray uh, enabled uh, in your Maya. Uh, so I'm going to go to indirect lighting and go to Environment and Physical Sun and Sky and hit Create. And that will set up some nice parameters for us and also, uh, more importantly, create a nice uh, key light for our scene. Now, if you remember from the render I just, I just did, there was an area light doing a good job of kind of um, complementing what our sun direction light will do. Um, and when I take another test render, we'll see what we get. So I'm just going to scale these. It doesn't really matter uh, whether or not you scale these up. I'm just scaling them up so I can really see the uh, direction of the sunbeams coming in through the window. So let me just open up my little render preview and take another snapshot. Okay, so here's the initial render uh, using the physical sun and sky. It uh, looks pretty good. We've got our light coming in through the window, uh, hitting onto the countertop, and then uh, proceeding to cast down here, and you can see off screen a little bit of reflection there from the light. Uh, notice I don't have anti-aliasing turned on yet. I just simply don't want to go into that, uh, go down that rabbit hole right now because um, I'm trying to optimize my render time, and really all I'm doing is trying to um, see the effect I'm getting, so I don't really care too much about overall final quality at this stage. So at this point, um, everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to jump into my um, hypershade. Let me just bring that window open. Go to my utilities and click on the... Um, uh, what you want to do is look here. The exposure node, no. The physical sun node. What am I looking for? I just lost my train of thought. Um, yep, uh, let's get the horizon height. Let's bring it down negative uh, 0.5. Um, if you can see out the window there, you can see you can see the horizon line. It doesn't really matter. If I were to send this to final completion, I would definitely be comping in some sort of background. So uh, that's really irrelevant. And let me just do a quick re-render to see what we get. All right, so uh, that's better. Um, if I just save this in the bin there, you can see that the previous render had um, the horizon line up here, and now the new one's got it sort of gone. And it slightly adjusts the... Um, global uh, illumination of everything. No, not literally, but sort of, so to speak. Um, it, it hits a little bit high, hot, uh, little hotter up here than it did before. If I just toggle back between the old ones, you can see there's um, uh, sort of a darker uh, illumination right there, but if I, with the horizon brought down, it pops it up a little bit there. Uh, but I think it looks good, so I'm, I'm satisfied thus far. Okay, so uh, let's get some sunbeams in here. Okay, so to do that, let me just minimize this window here, and I'm going to uh, I'm just going to bounce over to my perspective view, and you can see my scene again. So what I need to do first is I need to make a little poly cube. Uh, it's actually, relatively speaking, it's not so little. It's actually going to encompass the entire little set here. And let me just switch to wireframe so I can see what's going on. And I'll just move this cube. Uh, like I was saying, just to encompass what's going on in our scene. So I just got it right in there. And probably bring it a little bit in there. Okay, great. So it's a cube. Um, if I drop to my shaded view, I can't see anything, and that's, well, that's bad for now, so let's fix all that. So what we want to do first is on this cube, we want to give it a new shader. I'm going to give it a new Lambert. Okay, just a uh, good old Lambert number two. You can rename it if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to, but uh, you know, if you feel so inclined, you can do so. I'm now going to open up the Hypershade. Oops. There we go. And uh, just graph the network of my Lambert two, and then hit the input-output connection so I can grab its shading group node. Okay, so this is down in my work area. 
I'm going to make sure I'm in my create meta ray nodes uh, window here. And I'm going to pull out two different nodes. Uh, first is transmat. Let's put it over here. And the second one would be uh, under, uh, I'm sorry, I should say that transmat is underneath your um, general nodes there on general materials. Right there at the bottom, right above shadow shaders. And then volumetric material, uh, the particle volume, I'm going to grab that one as well. Okay, so these will be what describe or what turn our little uh, cube, Lambert 2 cube, into um, a nice uh, particle field, if you will. So I'm going to click on my shading group node. And in that tab under Mental Ray, make sure you're in the uh, Lambert, uh, in this case Lambert 2 SG uh, folder. And under Mental Ray, you'll see that you've got a bunch of different custom shader things you can plug into here. So on the material shader and the shadow shader, I'm going to plug in the transmat. And for the volume shader, well, of course, the uh, particle volume. And then in it goes. And that's your connection for that. Okay. So, um,. That's pretty good to go right now. If I click on the, uh, by the way, the transmit uh, node itself, if you uh, there's nothing to treat in there, but the uh, the part the particle volume, you will need to adjust the scatter, and perhaps your extinction and uh, everything else. Um, yeah, I, I don't believe I'm going to touch in this video, but uh, there's a lot of documentation on it in my help if you feel like you want to go down that uh, that road. But uh, we're going to be only dealing with extinction and scatter, I believe, for this video. But um, not just yet, so okay. Uh, now um, let's go to our uh, render settings. And in our render settings, let's just, uh, we've got physical sun and sky enabled, uh, which you should have done already. So under features, I'm going to make sure I have auto volume turned on. And then my volume samples, I'll set them to, well, I know 10 will work, but maybe you want to go down to 8 or something like that just to make sure that we can actually see this volume uh, when we render. Uh, using physical sun and sky will enable uh, uh, ray tracing, of course. So um, should be, let me look for it here. Ray tracing should be enabled. Yes, it is. Um, the trace, max trace depth, I think I'll set five. And everything else should be good to go. Okay, so I believe our render settings are all ready. Now, if I go back to the hypershade, let's go ahead and click on our party, uh, particle volume one. And in the scatter, well, you can set this to whatever color you want to for your, uh, for your fog. I'm going to ignore it for now and just uh, t tweak it up a little bit. Um, and the darker you make it, the less sort of um, dusty and uh, foggy it will be in your scene. So I'm going to keep it kind of low for now. Um, and then I'll set the extinction to uh, 0 0.1. Um, and that should do a reasonable uh, uh, render. Okay, so let me just minimize all this stuff. I'm going to switch back to my render cam and take a quick render. Okay, that took about five minutes of, um, you know, misery to get that out. So, okay, so this is, we got the effect though. It looks looking good. The sunbeams are coming in. Um, yeah, I want to point out though, the darker the scatter value is, um, the less of an impact these uh, this this fogginess will be, if you will. Um, so just keep in mind if you decide to color this, what you can do, you know, red like it's you know nuclear fallout or something, or um, you know, sort of sun some sun color. Uh, just keep in mind that um, the value will be really important because the higher the value, the, the more the sun's going to react with the little particles, and thus it'll kind of ignite your scene a bit more. So if you want this color, but you don't want you want this sort of effect, so you just want to dial down your value to be uh, relatively low. But it's got a, a slight tint to it, so it should um, pick up that um, saturation, and that should look pretty good. Um, okay, so right now, one thing I didn't um, set up when I uh, uh, what I should have before I set that to render was that there is a light linking um, folder in the uh, particle volume one node. And uh, if you don't set that up initially, what it will do is it will actually um, just affect all the lights in the scene. And in our case, we've got a area light plus the sun direction. So that's fine. I mean, the, the effect it's doing is, is just fine. But if you want to be more specific about it, well, what we'll do is we'll just open up our hypershade, uh, go to our lights menu, and uh, you can just simply click on that particle volume node. There's the uh, input there for the lights. And you can just middle mouse button drag and just plop that sun shape uh, directional light onto that and re-render. Now, um, 
one last thing. Uh, we've got the effect going. Uh, like I said, adjusting the scatter will really uh, dramatically change the impact of this. Uh, one thing you want to do that I found uh, fairly useful was to, um, on the uh, physical, uh, let's see, the physical node, uh, let's see which one. That would be the exposure node of the physical sun sky. You may want to tune your gamma down a bit. Um, and what that will do is it'll just increase the dark range of your va of your render. Um, so if I went to say 1.5 as opposed to 2.2, .2, uh, we should see a um, a more a richer, a darker range in, in our uh, a render. Not to mention the fact that we also just link the uh, sun uh, directional light uh, to that node itself. So we should get a a pretty noticeable change in our our render. So let's just do that, and uh, we'll call it a day. Okay, so as you can see, this render is uh, significantly different than the previous one, um, mainly because of the area light non-linking to the uh, particle, um, and also the uh, lower the gamma value uh, in the physical sky node. So really, uh, at this point, it's just a matter of uh, tweaking these parameters uh, to get to somewhere you want uh, where you want to be, um, changing the color of the scatter of this uh, these beams, if you like. Um, but uh, that's how you do it. Good luck. Uh, just uh, comment with any questions or concerns you may have. Um, I may actually put this uh, scene uh, as downloadable um, so you can work from it if you like to as well. Okay, take care.